Welcome traders to another Tickle Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 14th of November with me, Patrick Munley. In the US, Fed officials will have to tread carefully regarding hiking expectations. The low CPI print from uh, the US last week has really boosted expectations that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates by only 50 basis points in December after four consecutive 75 basis point hikes. However, the Fed will be nervous that Treasury yields fell so far as some market participants interpreted the number as an indication that the Fed's work is nearly done. However, Fed officials won't want to signal that yet as it will reinforce the loosening of financial conditions that could undermine all the hard work in trying to constrain inflation. Expect to hear some fairly hawkish rhetoric over the coming days, messaging that will uh, likely be for a moderation in the size of rate hikes. Inflation is not defeated and there is likely to be a higher terminal interest rate than the central bank signaled in September. In terms of data, we get retail sales, industrial production, producer price inflation and housing starts and existing home sales. Moderate growth is likely to be the order of the day in the activity reports, while the housing numbers will be soft due to the rapid rises in mortgage borrowing costs that have prompted a collapse in demand. PPI uh, should come in on the softer side of expectations thanks to the falling commodity prices and freight costs plus the stronger dollar and easing supply chain conditions. From a technical perspective, dollar index traded to our targets. We achieved the 107.72 uh, earlier in the week and we traded just shy of our next downside objective at the 105.97 coming into Friday's close. Closed pretty weak on Friday. So I'm looking for any three-wave corrective moves back into the 107.70 to 10820 area watch bearish reversal patterns there to re-engage on the short side next down the side objective is 10442 this stage should take a close back through our invalidation level through 10850 to suggest uh, a more significant corrective move to take place moving to the eurozone in terms of data this week, we get September industrial production on Monday, 1.5% uh, print last time out, support from easing supply issues, but the outlook is likely to remain gloomy. Heading into Tuesday, we get the November ZEW survey of expectations. Last time, negative 59.7, very challenging outlook ahead in terms of expectations there. We'll also get September trade balance, uh, last time out, negative 47.3 billion. Energy-related import values are still elevated. We also get Q3 uh, GDP, second estimate, looking for a 0.2% print there. Uh, growth outcome surprisingly resilient given uh, the headwinds we see within the Eurozone. Then heading into Thursday, we get October CPI, uh, year over year, looking for 10.7, up from that 9.9 .9 print. Uh, last time out, final estimate is expected to confirm the expanding breadth of inflation within the Eurozone. Uh, from a technical perspective, Euro dollar traded to our target uh, on Friday. So we took out that 102.85. So in terms of the next technical level we are looking at, we're now looking for a test of this descending trend line resistance. 106.50s on the upside. So I'd anticipate we get some pullback and some corrective action uh, back into test these prior highs here. So let's say 102.20s, we look for uh, bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. Next upside technical objective for this pattern is going to be the 104.60s. But like I said, ultimately, we're now looking for a move into this daily trend line resistance coming in 106.20s. But step by step, so uh, for now, we are looking for an extension to the upside after a corrective move to target 104.60s. <clears throat> At this stage, it will really take a close back through the 10090 level to suggest a more meaningful corrective move is underway. Moving to the UK, in terms of uh, the data slate next week, really the focus is going to be on the autumn statement uh, from mm. Chancellor Hunt. Markets have generally given uh, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and his Chancellor Jeremy Hunt the benefit of the doubt when it comes to next week's autumn statement. That's partly because these announcements will be accompanied by new forecasts from the Office for Budgetary Responsibility, something that was lacking when the ill-fated mini-budget was announced in September. 
Traders, no doubt, expect the Chancellor to do enough to convince the OBR that debt will fall across the medium term, closing a fiscal deficit that would probably otherwise be 30 to 40 billion per year into 26, 27. Exactly how that will be achieved remains somewhat uncertain and pretty much uh, every possible lever available to the Chancellor has been touted in the press at some point over the past few weeks. Recent reports suggest the Treasury will rely more on spending than taxes to do the heavy lifting, but given the real term cuts in some sizes quite sizable, uh, already facing certain government departments, it may be that this means more noticeable cuts to investment spending. For the economy, uh, much will depend on how much of the burden is placed on consumers by a higher taxation and how immediately those changes come through. We'll also be looking at further detail on how the government intends to restructure its flagship energy price guarantee. Uh, the price cap, which had been due to last for two years, will be scaled back from April. Uh, working assumptions are that households will be shifted back to the off-gem regulated price, uh, which market estimate to be around £3,300 annually based on the current futures prices, up from that 2500 at the current government guaranteed level. We'll also get a few... And a key piece of data in the UK next week, we get jobs on Tuesday. Hiring indicators have begun to turn lower, but so far there has been little to no sign of increased redundancies. On Wednesday, we get inflation reading, uh, famous last words, but October's inflation is likely to mark the peak in the UK CPI or there or thereabouts. This data will also include the latest rise in electricity and gas prices. Uh, but given that we're now being fixed by the government, obviously, until at least April, their contribution has probably peaked. Uh, still, headline inflation is unlikely to slip back into single digits until March or April of next year. And then on Friday, round out the week in the UK, with retail sales, expect a third consecutive month-on-month -month fall in sales as the cost of living squeeze continues to bite. From a technical perspective, sterling dollar broke to new highs as we anticipated, now testing into monthly projected range resistance 118.50s. So I'm looking for any pullbacks now back into the prior highs here at the 116.60, 116.50 area. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And we're looking for a move up into our target zone, which is this 120. At this stage, it would really take a close now back through this uh, projected ascending trend line support, back through 115 to suggest a more meaningful pullback. And we'd be looking at the primary trend line support into the 113.50s. Moving to Japan, uh, from a data perspective, what have we got on the slate next week? Well, on Tuesday, we're going to get Q3 GDP. Uh, last time out, 0.9%, looking for a weakening there to 0.3%. Wheat trade is likely to offset support from consumption. We'll also get September industrial production. Uh, last time, uh, negative 1.6%, and that's the final estimate read coming into that print. And then on Wednesday, we'll get September machinery orders. Last time, negative 5.8%. Looking for a positive 0.6%. Volatility continues, but points to downside CapEx spending risk. And then we ran out the week on Friday with October CPI um, year over year. Uh, last time out, 3%. Looking for an increase there up to 3.7%. Price pressures are building, and the BOJ is certainly focused on wage inflation. From a technical perspective, Dolly Yen traded through our targets, so we hit uh, the 143.20s, traded through the 141.13s, and as of Friday, I updated that I was looking for a test of this 139.20. We got that and exceeded it to the downside. So looking at a um, new technical setup or new pattern that I'm tracking now, I'm looking for a corrective move, a uh, three-wave corrective move, something similar to what we saw into the early part of November before we get that next leg to the downside. So we are going to look for um, some support to develop around this uh, low here, 138.30s. Three-wave corrective moves back into the midpoint of the channel here. So something around 141.50s. From there, we watch for bearish reversal patterns to re-engage on the short side, targeting a move down to test the equality objective into that 136.14s. And we can see here we have high volume load on the daily time frame just below there. 135s. So, uh, like I say, bearish reversal patterns into that 140, 140s, 140, 150s to target those downside objectives. From an invalidation perspective, really, we need a close now back through this 
trend channel resistance, which uh, which is likely to come in as we start the week back through 145. So and likely we see that early in the week and we're looking for further downside extension. Heading down under to Australia. In terms of data, get the RBA minutes on Tuesday, more colour on that November decision. Also get October overseas arrivals. Uh, net temporary visa arrivals are starting to pick up in Australia then. On Wednesday, we get October Westpac uh, leading index. Last time negative 1.15% one, well, 1 pointing to a material loss of momentum really heading into 2023. We will then also get Q3 wage price index. Last time 0.7%, looking for a positive 0.9%. The outsides increase in minimum wage should be seen through the last quarter's data. Then heading to Thursday, we get the October employment, looking for a 15K print there. Employment growth average just 200 per month for the last three months and firm participation points to arise in unemployment. So we should see an employment rate coming in 3.6% versus 3.5% last time out. And that rounds out the data down under in Australia. From a technical perspective, again, we've achieved all our targets uh, in this last week. We uh, were looking for that 65.90, got that, and then we had an upside extension to that 66.60. Now what I'm looking for is a test of this daily trend line resistance currently coming in with the monthly R3 at 67.70. So any pullbacks early in the week to find support into the 66 handle, and we're gonna target a test up into that 67.70 trend line resistance. At this stage, the invalidation point for this thesis would really only come on a break of this trend line support, so way back down at 64.50s. So let's round out the outlook with a quick look at our weekend risk barometer, Bitcoin. Obviously, torrid week last week with the FTX meltdown. Finding some support here now at the 16,300 level. As we retain uh, support here, we look for an upside extension. An equality objective, corrective equality objective target is 18,872. At this stage, any close back through the 16,300 bearish development, and we are likely to retest lows into 15,500. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 14th of November. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.